Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi uh, wabarakatuh. Welcome everyone. How are you? How's going? How's everything? I hope things are fine. Uh, alhamdulillah, we are catching up with our sessions here and we are doing a good job. Last time we finished the Pareto chart. And uh, if I take you to the seven QC tools again, and uh, what do we have? We have the Pareto chart was one of the first seven QC tools that we had applied. <clears throat> And they, they call these the new 7QC tools, whatever the old or the new ones. So all of them are quality control tools. So we finished the Pareto chart. Now let's go to the histogram. Uh, the histogram has has various ways of, of, of presenting it. And and this is one of the histogram data. And uh, histogram could be looked at statistically, like yani how how we can represent that statistically, if I would state it in that, in that meaning, uh, which means that what is the width of the bar and uh, how do I decide what is the width uh, here? We, we won't go to the details of those statistical analysis because it is not requested for all histograms. Histogram is a very simple technique it can be used by any person without really considering uh, calculating the width of each uh, each bar. I think so. The width of each bar, it will depend on the person. However, you need to keep them equal. You need to keep them equal uh, so that you can you know, do your analysis much more. But even I had found out that some people don't keep equal width uh, it depends on the application and we are going to take an example and see uh, if that makes sense for you or not. OK, so. Going to histograms. OK, I don't know what I was doing on this page. OK, so uh, going to histograms. So uh, the idea is what? Uh, we, let's take an, a, an example. I have a coffee shop and I'm going to talk about the coffee shop. Just an example to to be in our mind. In the Seaf Mall, there's a coffee shop at the top that I like to go. It is called. Uh, uh, oh my God, I forgot. Uh, uh, do you remember what is the name of the coffee shops? Just call me. It's not Starbucks. I don't go to Starbucks. Uh, oh ho. Oh. Caribou. Caribou, mashallah alaik. Okay, Caribou coffee. So it's good to feel that there are someone who's participating, Yani. Okay, so uh, we have Caribou uh, Cafe. Okay, Caribou Cafe, yani. And in Caribou Cafe, uh, now those people who go to Caribou Cafe and and they go in the morning, they will find out that it is different when you go uh, at evening times. Even afternoon times is different. So, uh, for example, like I, I as the manager of Caribou Cafe, I decided to do a study. And what is my study? My study is going to uh, do some kind of analysis and uh, and see my age group my age group who come to Caribou Cafe. So here I'll spell the word age. So uh, I, I, I do. I do calculate or I also could register the time of the people who at what time they came in and uh, and and then I start registering that that time. So for example, I, I have people coming age of uh, 25 and then age of 28 and another person came he was 35 years old and and uh, people know that may maybe this is true if I'm talking about 8 8 uh, 10 and then 8 12 and uh, and so on when I'm putting the data but when I start well, at about uh, nine ish or even ten. Oh, okay, I forgot that they don't open except at ten. So let's start with ten. <laughs> okay, so um, 
I'll, I'll put that like that. That's that's better. And when it, it approaches 11 o'clock, then you you find the age group started becoming uh, different. So you may have younger people coming, but you may have a more elder people coming on the age of 55 or the, the, the age of 60, the age of 65. It, you can see different group. And um, and and you, you already can see that. And of course, if you go to the Caribou Cafe, I'm just imagining that I'm still registering the data for that day. And you can register the data also for, for the whole weekend. If you register for the whole weekend, that means you have a sample every day. And if you have a sample every day, you can do an, a, a study, which is which is um, you can do the PCA analysis, which is something else, which is the principal component analysis. Um, so I don't want to bother you about the whole the, the other statistical tools, but here I'm talking about only hist histograms. And after you record your data throughout the day, and, and of course, at afternoon, you will see a different people coming and at, at night, at evening time, the night, different uh, age groups. And then you have some kind of a distribution of, 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 your, of your data. And then you say that, uh, well, we found out that on, on Monday, for example, we found that on Monday, for example, uh, and uh, for our age groups, between zero to ten, we had we had about uh, thirty people coming in, and the age of ten to twenty. And sometimes you want to separate this. You don't want ten twenty. You want ten to fifteen, for example. Okay, uh, it's, it's, it makes a difference because people, Lani, uh, they pay differently. And maybe you want a different product to satisfy that age group. I'm going to come to the analysis in a moment, but that's the beauty of, of doing the histogram. And, and the histogram is very similar to the bar chart, uh, except that they always say that the histogram, you usually uh, stick them together. And, and I don't think so. That is really important. Sticking them together, that means this is from zero to nine age. And then I'm going to put from 10 to 20 age and um, it, it just makes the the the, uh, the 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 data very close to each other just to mention that this is the age group that comes directly after from 0 to 9 and for example from 0 to 20 you found out that there are about 70 people uh, that had attended and then you go to 20 to 30. And for example, you find out that uh, about 120 people attended uh, or came to the coffee shop. And then you go from for 40 to 50. Uh, I have no space. Huh? And then you go from 40 to 50 and you found out that it goes I don't know if it's higher or not. I'm just guessing. Uh, OK, <laughs> from 40 to 50, maybe it's less. And let me say it's less about 110. That was 120 when at the 120. And then from 50 to 60. And then from 50 to 60, just doing some space here, 40 to 50 and then 50 to 60. Uh, it was about uh, 60 people. OK, and you can write here 60 if you want to. Uh, 110, 120, uh, 70, uh, 30 and and so on. OK, so for example, let me say here 50 to 60 or above. OK, so. Um, uh, so talking about histogram, this gives gives you a distribution and that distribution just gives you an indication that well, I may think about concentrating on uh, this age group. Uh, actually, if I concentrate on these two age groups, concentrate, that means I'm going to have my products and services 
that satisfy what? That satisfy these two age groups, which is from 20 to 30 and then from 30 to 40. I forgot 30 to 40. Huh? OK, whatever, Yanni. Now I just clicked 40 to 50, so um, let's change it. It's just an example. OK, so that is 30 to 40 and then 40 to 50. And then if you want 50 to 60, uh, if you want to 50 to 60, uh, that could be, for example, 55 people. So, uh, so I want to concentrate, for example, on these two age groups, and I found out that concentrating on these two age groups could be really good. However, if you think about it, well, uh, uh, I I still have a good number of age group above 40 to above 60 that I I may also want to satisfy. Um, so you start thinking about it. And then the question comes on. I mean, this, this is a good graph. This is this. This is a histogram. OK, so if you want to know what is a histogram, this is a histogram uh, who identified uh, the who identified the, uh, the the intervals here. You are the one who identified it uh, based on what? Based on the need. Yeah, because I thought that this is a fair uh, distribution. You may want to go for you don't want to calculate 0 to 9. For example, you want to calculate from 10 to 15, 15 to 20, 20 to 25. It depends on you if it makes sense. And sometimes it doesn't make sense because 20 to 25 is like 25 to 30 going to coffee shop. So sometimes it doesn't make sense. Just distributing even it further into smaller intervals. So this is a very good distribution. However, uh, however, if you have also another figure with, of a histogram, and, and this is why I said that histogram is a tool. It depends on you of how you want to use it. And depending on you, everything will be easier to analyze or it will be more difficult to analyze. So if I would like to say that, I would like to know from 10 to 11. Okay, now I'm, I'm changing the, the, the whole concept. Let me say from 10 to 12 o'clock. How many people do I have that come to my coffee shop? For example, I have from 10 to 12, I have about 120 people. Now that 120 people who come to me, what is the distribution of each part of it? And, and here I'm talking about the distribution of age groups. So it could be, for example, I have uh, a bigger age group. I have a bigger age group of uh, of uh, 40 to 50 or 40 to 60, for example, and that place. And I have a smaller group of uh, of people who are under 40. And as and a smaller group who are above 50, for example. But why I'm trying to say this, I'm trying to say this because uh, it just gives you a reflection about what to do and how to analyze. Here we said that what age groups we are going to concentrate on. However, here we are saying what age groups and at what time exactly. Which means if I have my shop and I have my this my 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 window. Uh, what I have all of my products sitting here. This is my these are my products. OK, having the muffins, uh, the sandwiches. OK, and and so on. Well, what is best to present here and what are the best options that coffee that you want to show in your advertisement to these age groups. So so you can see that how how easy you can use this this histogram as a tool. And uh, and and you're using it to do some kind of an analysis looking at this distribution because this distribution just gives you an idea about it and looking at what looking at <clears throat> Looking at the time at which people do come and the age groups of the people as well. Uh, I think so. This is like a very beautiful. It could be 
presented and and we can and we can do a lot of analysis here a lot of analysis okay so uh, it's different from a bar chart, by the way. OK, it's different from bar chart because bar chart does not have this distribution of data. OK, and, and let me give me give you an example of a bar chart. Uh, OK, how to give you an example? Let's hold it actually. OK, so let's give you an example of a bar chart. Uh, just seconds. I'm, I'm sitting alone at home, so there's someone ringing the bell. Sorry, and uh, just give me a second, one minute. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, having some issues at home. This is when you do things online from home. <laughs> this is what you face. OK, so let me show you some data that I have here because I already prepared some information for you. Uh, so one of the information that I have, for example, I'm going to show you the bar chart now. Uh, so that is that that is a the, the data for 2019-2020, last year students, and who graduated from uh, chemical engineering. And uh, we do ask students some questions. 
and 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 now this is not a histogram this is like a bar chart okay uh, so uh, maybe because i arranged it in this way it has some some kind of an histogram and a bar chart at the same time because i have a distribution here OK, so uh, I, I'm, I'm just using two concepts. Well, let me explain what's going on. So this is, these are questions on advising for and the questions on advising. We have one. How many people said that they attempted to visit? I attempted to visit my advance advisor at least at least once per semester. So how many people eight said that? Yes, we attempt. Uh, no, eight says one which means that they don't they don't attempt uh, eight another eight they said two so these 16 people they are not attempting about any uh, to see their advisor and uh, nine people said three that means they attempt but i'm not sure how much yani uh, four six people said four eleven people said five well, uh, attempting to see your super uh, advisor is, is, is not a big thing, Yanni. Uh, however, this one is really important. My academic advisor seemed interested in helping me. So we are very happy to see that 20 plus 6, which is which is 4 and 5, score is 5. So about 26 people, they are saying that they are very happy. Uh, they, that uh, the, the, the advisor do seem to be interested in helping me. However, we have a big number which is not four or five, right? Even though three is satisfactory, but if I'm going to put the three with the next two, which is seven plus four plus five, 16 people, they're not that that much. Uh, this one uh, was worrying, worrying for us. My advisor was knowledgeable about the curriculum plan requirements. So we are happy with the 18 plus seven, Maybe little about seven, but we have eight plus two. So many people think that they are not, um, they're they're not knowledgeable. Okay. Now I received excellent advising with my academic program. You see this graph? Uh, it doesn't show me something good, right? Uh, it tells me like how many people they receive. They do not receive excellent advising. The the ones who receive excellent advising are fifteen. Uh, 15 people out of, uh, I didn't ca calculate the total, uh, 20, uh, 27, 35, 42, 42. So we have 15 out of 42 who said that they received excellent advising. Of course, we have more data on admission and registration. And just to show you, uh, one of the questions, I'm generally satisfied with the registration process. <laughs> so you can see that how many people are not satisfied with the registration pro process. It's 19 plus 10 are not satisfied. Even I can include seven because if I want to talk about the people who are satisfied, there are only six people out of 42 people who are satisfied with the registration process. And, and you can see how, how, how bad is that? Uh, I'm happy to say that I was responsible to build the system at the University of Bahrain, but it's it's not about building a system. It's about if you're taking actions based on what is going on here, because this data could be hidden easily. Um, I don't know if you know or not, but uh, I started presenting this data to the students, to the student council, and um, and and I think so. This was a red line that I crossed. And, uh, uh, and and then many things happened. It's a recorded session. OK, so then many things happened. Uh, uh, talking about curriculum, there are other questions about curriculum, facilities, uh, talking about restaurants, and, and, and there are more and more. Uh, OK, uh, overall experience, uh, if people are happy with the program. If you see these blue lines, the blue and the purple one, you can see they are higher in most of them, uh, which means that people are really happy. They have a good program experience. They are happy about the program, but maybe they have issues with the facilities. You can see how it is very colorful here, here which means there's a problem with the facilities. But there is a way of how we can present data in a different way. There are always different ways. 
Uh, I'm talking about the histogram mainly, uh, but you, you always can present the data in a different way. I and mean, for example, uh, I don't know if you know something called pivot tables. Uh, where is that? Uh, insert pivot table. OK, a pivot table. And uh, for example, you can include the gender and the GPA and the department. And then you put the question, uh, I attempt to visit my advisor, for example. So I put it in, uh, in the filter. I forgot. Oh my God. OK, maybe it's the filter. So how many people I attempt to visit my advisor? So if I would, if I put it in in percentages, I don't know if this is a percentage or not. I need to. Ah, this is the sum of the GPA. The sum of the GPA does nothing. I I, I cannot use the sum of the GPA uh, uh, except if I put the GPA not as a sum, but I put it as a column. Uh, not that much. If I put it in my row, I get the details, but still I cannot get good information about it. Uh, whatever, I'll remove the GPA from the whole story. Uh, uh, so what I'm trying to say here, uh, let me remove the college and the department. I can see how many people uh, visit their advisor based on gender. How many people visit their advisor based on the GPA? However, talking about the GPA in terms of uh, in terms of um, what I, what do you see here? Um, uh, and in terms of GPA, how many of them visit their advisor? It's not that that much uh, important. However, if I do some kind of value where I say that I want to see how many people visit their advisor greater than uh, uh, how many people visit their advisor get greater than three. Uh, there is a way of how to do this. I didn't do this from a long time. Oh my God. Uh, if, if greater than three, I can do it through the value filter, but I just want to present to you without any errors now. Uh, oh my God, that's too much. I should have done the value filter, which is much easier. So you can see greater than and equal. Uh, again, value filter greater than uh, it doesn't want. Whatever, I'm going to count it. That's the easiest way to do. Now, just to show you, and so we have a 17 count. So 17 out of 42 people who are above three, they are going to see their instructors. And we have another 20, they also go see their advisor. However, only three people who are under two, they go see their advisor, which is very odd, right? Very odd. Those people who are under risk, they don't see their advisor. But going back, what I want to talk about is what is the histogram. What I have shown you is the bar graph, and then I showed you something else which is related to private tables, nothing to do with the quality tools here. But the main point that I had here was to talk about what? Was to talk about the histogram. Fine, you, you can have more analysis about histograms based on the, the, the marks of the students, for example. Uh, so these are your marks. For example, for case one, and and then I can click histogram, uh, frequency histogram. Okay, what happened? Uh, I already did this before I came. I come to you. Uh, let me see that. Yeah, frequency histogram. Uh, uh, you cannot use this command on a protected sheet. Aha, uh -huh. OK, it is a protected sheet. Thank you. Unprotect. OK. So do it again. Histogram, frequency histogram. So here it's ask me about the minimum and the maximum. Uh, and you can include minimum and maximum values. And this is, for example, for case one. And if you can see for case one that I already can see the distribution. It's good that I can see the distribution here. Somehow it's going down here. Many people, because we are, you, you remember that you're in groups, and this is why you can't see this. This is distributed in groups. If you were individuals, you see the marks 
individually for, for the whole di uh, distribution here. Uh, let me get another one. Uh, let me get another one so that you can see the distribution uh, from last year. Last year, last year. When I can get last year. Uh -huh. mm. Is it that one? OK, it's opening. Still opening. Yalla. Just a second. Uh, still stuck, huh? I'm going to open it again. Uh, let me say I will close the session here. Don't save. I don't want <laughs> to have troubles. Let me open it again. OK, ah, OK, this is for this year live. I want it for last year. I'm not going to. Uh, uh, I cannot use this data now. Ah. I wanted to show you a data that is more related and uh, I'm stuck now. OK, what can I do? Let me see another course where I can. OK, this is also for this year, maybe. Let me see. I think so. I have all for this semester for last semester. I have nothing to show. Uh, unfortunately. PIC Eng331. I think so. I can use this because I have more than one course. Okay, great, Dr. Qaisla. Uh, this is for the senior project, huh? Mungkin bad. Well, we can see the senior project. It's beautiful. You can see everything, right? And on my PC, it just makes you feel. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how you feel, but. Uh, let me see the summary here. OK, this has doesn't have the marks. OK, good. <laughs> hard like hard like that. It doesn't show the marks. OK, so we, this is the distribution of the final marks of last year. And I'm going to click here, histogram, frequency histogram. OK, again, it's a protected sheet. I'll unprotect it. And I'll do this again. Histogram, frequency histogram. Yes, that's the maximum. He's asking me about the maximum and the minimum. OK, so now you can see a more distributed, uh, distributed mark. So you can see that. The, the the lowest limit that I have here is uh, it's about something like 10. And the maximum that I have here is 48.1. And the mean and the median that we have in the, between here is about 29. Uh, and we have more people getting out of 40. There are some people who got more than 40 because I gave a bonus. And this is why you can't see 41.8. And uh, you, and there are, of course, many people down there. Now, looking at the distribution here, I can see that it is little skewed, uh, S-K-E-W, it's little skewed into the left side. Little skewed in the left side, uh, somehow. But I can calculate how, much, how many students that I have here for my count. Seven plus three, 10 students. And then I can see the count here, seven plus two plus one, which is also 10. Now this is not skewed. So I have 10 students on the left and 10 students on the right. The, so the histogram for me here gives me that, that this is like a binomial distribution. 
that I have and uh, for my test. Time to be honest with you. Um, I already had some individual uh, bonuses here. Let me see. I know this is um, a mix up data, sorry. Uh, but I remember that I added some individual bonuses uh, and and I just a little care up, a very small care up, just to make sure that uh, the, 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 that it becomes normally distributed. Uh, of course, we do. I do a curve up, but I don't do curve down, so don't worry. Uh, so that is for the histogram. So th th this is the whole story of histogram. Um, when a histogram. So that is the whole story of the histogram. And uh, and and why I'm trying to show you that in Excel you can do a lot of analysis with the histogram stuff because. Uh, uh, I'm not going to ask you in the exam to uh, to draw a histogram, okay, and 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 calculate. I mean, not to calculate these small numbers here. Uh, however, I may give you the numbers and ask you to analyze it, okay. I may give you the numbers and try to I ask you to analyze it. For case studies, it's that's going to be straightforward and simple. Now. If you're going to do an analysis, you always can use the online uh, or the, the tools that are available for you because the tools just makes your life easier. Uh, OK, so this is what I have done, right? I have just taken this, these numbers and I said I want a histogram and, and it just plots it for me. Uh, and, and this is something good that you can uh, use. And uh, and and for example, if you go to another example where you want to plot a Pareto chart. Uh, let me see if you want to plot a Pareto chart. I did this. Uh, let me see book two, right? Uh, let me see if I can do this. But, but these are not errors. I mean, I don't know if, if, if you, it will allow me to do this or not, but you can see. It's not a really good Pareto chart because I'm not talking about errors here, but it, it, you can draw a Pareto chart. You see, you can have a Pareto chart very beautifully drawn, showing to you the, the, the frequency of the data and the 80 person rule that you can use here. Uh, again, did I draw this by my hands? I did not. I used a tool, OK? And there are many tools that you can find out, uh, find online. Uh, uh, usually they give you the tools free for one month, so you can use it till the end of the semester somehow. Um, so that is just to tell you that I'm not going to give you something on the exam that looks like that, but most probably uh, I would ask you to analyze uh, the problem just to see if you understand the concept of histogram and you can analyze uh, th this data here. Or I can ask you to to select a, ver a suitable tool uh, to analyze this data here, and then you're going to select a suitable tool. Uh, of course, if you select Pareto chart for this data here, uh, I'm sure that it doesn't make sense. Uh, but if you use a histogram, it will make sense. Uh, so definitely you will select a histogram tool to analyze this kind of data that you have here. Uh, that's all that I have for today. Yani it's, a, it's a very short uh, session and um, a very easy tool to cover for today. Any questions? OK, no questions at all. Uh, that's fine for me. Uh, I think so. This is good enough. And what else do I have to say? Thank you very much. Those who are interested to improve something in the program and they want the data of what I had presented, uh, what I had presented uh, in the SES, the Senior Exit Survey results, and they want to improve things for the sake of improvement, uh, I could supply the data to them. Um, yeah, I don't have any problem of exposing data, even though that I have faced problems, but uh, it's part of my personality, uh, whatever happens. 
so so if you want to use the data for good, I'm happy to do this. If you don't really want to use it for good, don't call me. Uh, so that's all. يعطيكم العافية شكرا جزيلا and see you on Thursday إن شاء الله وبالسلام إن شاء الله السلام عليكم بالتوفيق.